I just want to uh, respond very quickly to a few things. I believe we do always create the wrong impression. Uh, my good friend here said Article 99 gives concurrent jurisdiction to both the Supreme Court and the High Court, and, and the Supreme Court have assumed jurisdiction. That's not correct. Look at Article 99. It's very clear only the High Court has jurisdiction. I think your marking went to the Supreme Court not based on Article 99. Article 130. 130 is one of the They should have taken view of 99. He even went as far as using Judge Mensah going and they say no. If the Supreme Court has a concurrent jurisdiction with the High Court, you go to the lower court first. But that's not what happens here. I think your marking went to court. He made it very clear under Article 130 for the enforcement and interpretation of the Constitution. Let's get that right. Otherwise, we'll be. 130. Yes, 130 for the enforcement and the interpretation of the Constitution. Enforcement because the, the, the Speaker of Parliament have taken powers under Article 99 from the High Court. So he's not going because of Article 99. He's going to enforce Article 130. To enforce the constitution so that's that's how we need to get it clear so it's going to mislead Ghanaians. another one is that the supreme court is not making the order to interfere with proceedings of parliament the order is made to enforce the constitution and they have that power to do that under article 2 so that's how we need to clarify it. when we do that we confuse Ghanaians. And then they hear from this lawyer, they hear from that lawyer. I think when it comes to constitutional law, please, we should try as much as possible to really get the expert who will help more than the rest of us who are politicians, who have self-interest can then come. Otherwise, we are just polluting the whole atmosphere. People who are non lawyer they get confused. So having clarified that side, that side needs to be clear. It doesn't concern judgment case at all. Article 99 give a complete Because you side with one. the Supreme Court. Yes. Because you side with the Supreme Court. Please go ahead. Okay. So, uh, having come to you, you said Afro-Barometer report you mentioned. I think the first thing you mentioned is that they said the country was going towards uh, the wrong direction. Over 80%, yes. And then, majority approve, uh, what do you call free it? The free SHS. I think there was a third one you mentioned. Well, they want e levy e levy um, abolished. They, yes, they, they, um, they, are, they are pressing needs. Okay, uh, uh, I will address the. Okay, I will address the last two later. But as the country is going through the wrong direction, I can understand what they mean, but it can be explained within context. You know, when the COVID nineteen hit the whole world, everywhere there was a struggle. And the president made serious. Are you also back with COVID nineteen? I thought you Let me come. No, 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 no. We have to always explain things in a context. The Afro barometer is saying because of difficulties, it's why some Ghanaians said it's running through the wrong direction. Is that not it? But if you can explain the causes of the difficulty, it can give some explanation. You might accept it or not, but majority, I believe, will accept it. If you compare it to the last administration, you can understand the context. And you also have to make a comparative analysis. Ghana is not an island on its own. It lives within the international community. Now, when COVID-19 hit, the president gave a very important speech. And I believe it was an important speech. And almost every head of state was trying to see which, which way can we, can we, I mean, what are the strategies to make sure that People do not die within our jurisdictions. The president said, we know how to bring economies back to life, but we do not know how to bring human beings to life. So what he was telling us is that I was going to prioritize human life over the economy because that is our prime, uh, what they call it, uh, objective to do under these circumstances. Some country prioritize the economy over human rights. A good example is Britain. I believe they prioritize economy of a human life see the number of deaths that occurred in britain italy brazil united states so i believe the priority was there so his speech well, tells us that I, I, I think that we are like when you have read, when you read the yes, report of yes. the united uh, of the united nations agency that okay. the who okay it's very clear in there okay. that many countries in most temperate regions yes uh, most tropical regions yes. did not suffer deaths okay. because either because of temperature reasons yes. or also because at the time that COVID 
happened and yes. there was embargo across yes. the world yes. movement of people also was isolated and you uh, and, and they all, and they also make yes. the considered view yes. that why the disease indeed spread yes. was that transportation when it comes to you, you air are transport. explaining reasons for mortality my reason Listen, wasn't there uh, but you, you, i was talking you just about, make I was a deduction about and related to mortality no, i was no i wasn't talking about mortality. about death and economy no, reasons for mortality are you saying brazil and no, then no, the no, other no, european no. countries reason? they suffered the deaths because no, they, they do didn't. in britain i was in the COVID era i was in britain throughout about for about five months the airports were open if you go through Heathrow Airport, Gatwick Airport, there was no, initially there was no controls. Just as Ghana did immediately, Britain. Ask anybody. The airport was open. A lot of people brought COVID in. But that's why I wasn't talking about mortality. I was talking about priorities. The president said he was going to prioritize human life over uh, what they call it, uh, the economy. But as to whether the priority led to low death, I'm not talking about that. But what I said is that, COVID-19 rightly led to global cost of living crisis. And as I said, Ghana is not in isolation. Either country, just as we have difficulties, the advanced countries such as Britain have cost of living crisis. So I can understand it. But if you compare it to the last administration, that's why we have these problems. We still did better than the last administration that Domama led. Domama led when he had taken out to the IMF, the, 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 the inflation rate was about 14%. And when we came to power, the MPP immediately brought it down to 7%. It was 7% before COVID-19 uh, hit us. So you check it. But what I'm saying is that I'm not denying that there are difficulties. No. But what I'm saying is that our difficulties can be explained. And right now we are beginning to get good news. Because as you said, Moody and other credit rating agencies have giving us some good ratings that the economy is beginning to to pick up so i'm going to just urge Ghanaians, let's be patient we'll soon have good news the economy is How's the economy to picking up uh, when you have restructured your debts you've you've Listen. prioritized the payments of, of your are creditors for later are we the first government to restructure the economy when the, i went during the 1998 2000 i was an e levy was introduced as part of IMF policy. No, no, the NDC introduced e no, no, yeah, Ishaq, They please, brought in please, cost sharing. Please, please don't don't introduce uh, uh -huh. some foreign issues to this. This no, is the no, first no, time. This issue. is the first time in the history yes. of Ghana yes. that we have any government yes. leading the front, yes. not able to pay its creditors. Yes. This is the first time, and and, and not, not me, not me saying that the, the, the Britain Wood institutions, yes. their relations yes. with and all the analysts. Yes. This is the first time. And this is historical what I'm information. What I'm trying to say is that every government, when you face difficulties, Ghana is not the first country to face difficulties. Around the world, the IMF is there for countries that face difficulties. We've got the Zimbabwe almost collapsing. Argentina is similar situation. The advanced country struggles. When it struggles, you meet the IMF, and they'll probably give you some conditionalities. Sometimes you need to cut. What I'm saying is that, yes, I agree as part of the MPP strategy was to do debt restructuring. But what I'm saying is that we are not the first, uh, what they call it, uh, political part, uh, government to do debt restructuring. Others do it. The NDC did it differently. Just how we brought E-Levy. They brought what, in... What did the NDC do by way of the debt restructuring for, the 19... for, 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 for ordinary citizens? 1998-99. You know what they, they did? What, what they, did they introduced, they uh, what did they call it, uh, um, uh, what they call it? But that's uh, debt restructuring. Uh, taxes. No, it was a part of debt restructuring. No. They introduced if, cost sharing. No, if if you are I saying that, kid, I'm telling you, I was in the. No, no, sir, I, I I'm not. I'm, I'm so not. I know I'm, you. I'm not they your challenging your competence. They introduced cost sharing. I'm not challenging your competence. Your knowledge level and experience. Students. Please okay. let's 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 put the other matters okay. into perspective. Yes. What I'm saying is that historically, yes. this is the first time a government has restructured debts. Creditors domestically have not been be, been able to be paid and this is the first time oh, you do you accept Ghanaian that government or a government domestic debt do okay. you understand yeah that? i i accept there was a debt restructure i'm not denying that but what i'm saying is that it was because of the exigencies that we face government has to make the changes. so it's not because of that and but the what, you are introduced but what i'm government. trying to tell you is that elsewhere when they face difficulties they did certain policies which were very unpopular then and one of them was uh, co-sharing. 
One of them was privatization. Even the Ghana Commercial Bank and had it. People made those decisions. Okay. But what I'm just saying so is like I can understand. Um, Commercial Ukraine is also accounting that. for the CD being 17 um, Ghana cities for a dollar. Well, if you are facing economic difficulties, likely it will affect your foreign exchange. So I don't deny it. But let me move to the other things and I address them. I have a free HHS. I agree with my very good friend here. He made some observation in one of our debates elsewhere that when it comes to education, the, the, I, I agree with him. When it comes to the education, there's no government in Ghana that will match. I didn't say that. Okay, you said we have done phenomenal good job. STEM schools. Okay. STEM. Okay. So these are my this words. Two minutes to wrap yes. up. When it comes to education, we, it is unmatched. In terms of producing infrastructure, especially the STEM schools. The first time in my area there's a STEM school at the classical secondary school. If you go and look at it, in Burkina Faso, that will be a, a university. That will be a first class university. Everybody, I invite people to go and have a look at it. I don't understand. Are you are you maligning Burkina Faso? No, I am not maligning. But what I'm saying is that economically we are Faso. doing better than them. No, I'm talking about the infrastructure. The kind of infrastructure they built from scratch. There was no school over there. They built it from scratch. It was number one. So as for education, it doesn't surprise me that the NDC are now coming to own it. Something they have always objected to and criticized. I'm, now, I'm not surprised that because of its success, they have jumped from criticizing it to owning it. Apparently, they introduced it first. But Ghanaians are not idiots. We might say things, but the listeners have intelligence. They know who such a free is it just first. It is one of the reasons that I believe the MPP government is going to be rewarded come 7 December. That will make Dr. Bagumia the president. The last one was which one? Let me just address it quickly. One minute. What, what was the last point? Okay, so the e levy. Yes. It's very clear. When the flag bearer of the MPP had the opportunity to meet the press at the UPSA, it was one of the very important points he made. That when he comes to power, he's going to abolish it. And so it's very clear. So what Ghanaians really wants is what the flag bearer is promising he will give to them. He said he's going to abolish yeah. it. And it is one of his strategies. You, you look surprised. What's the surprise? For me? Yes. No, no, I don't. You, you're done. So that's good. I so don't. the Ghanaians want e levy to be abolished. The flag bearer of the MVP say when he comes to power, he is going to abolish it. Mm -hmm. And let nobody pretend it's a policy stolen from the, the NDC. That's what they claimed. So the e levy will be abolished. And I think it's in the right direction.